Hello, my name is Tim, the Woodworking Maniac. Today, I made a bolt-action pin out of deer antler on the lathe. Check it out. Now, the first part of this challenge is actually finding a piece of deer antler that's the right size. There we go. Then it's off to the bandsaw. I'll cut it to length. I'll actually cut it just a little oversized, probably about a sixteenth of an inch or so extra. Now I've got a setup on my lathe here that'll allow me to grab this in a, in a set of jaws. And this works out usually okay uh, because I'm just kind of clamping it down in between two sets of jaws here. And with this not exactly being round, uh, it you can kind of hope for the best and hope that it'll actually clamp down and hold on good enough. Sometimes it'll get a catch and it'll just blow apart, but this time it worked out. So I uh, was able to drill all the way through here and got the hole right on through. Alright, I'm actually going to be using some medium CA glue here. Anytime I'm messing with CA glue, I like to use some gloves. <laughs> There's been a few times I've gotten some glue on my fingers. I'm just going to apply some CA to the brass tube. Set it right on in here. Try to get it a nice even coat by moving it around. And I just use the cap kind of push it down in there. Just make sure it's got a little bit on both sides. Just make sure it's even in there. Leave it there and I won't touch it for about an hour. Now uh, reaming the inside and getting the edges uh, smooth up to the brass tube. This is about the best way I've figured out how to do it. I've done it many different ways and trying to put it back into the jaws is almost impossible to get it even. Uh, because you got to do both sides and trying to get this non-round piece put it back in there it just it's almost impossible and doing it by hand putting your hand in there is a little risky because you can end up cutting yourself because that that deer antler can be pretty sharp so using a pair of pliers just seems to be about the safest way i've found all right get it on here on the mandrel with the bushings and it's ready to start turning First goal is to get it round, <laughs> and this stuff is hard. Uh, if you've ever cut antler, it, it's it's pretty hard stuff. And I realize at this point my tool needs sharpening again, and I paused for a moment and decided to make a change. I've used these easy wood tool um, cutters in the past in the store, just trying them out, and I <laughs> knew how much better they cut. I just never did uh, take the plunge and actually buy one, so uh, I was kind of excited to try this thing out. And look at those shavings come right off of there. Uh, <laughs> cut right through there. <laughs> no problem whatsoever. Uh, I was really surprised, really impressed as to how fast it was cutting right in there. I took a moment just I mean, it just went right through there. So, yeah, saved myself a whole lot of time and a whole lot of effort uh, by getting this tool and going to town with this. I didn't. Ha if I had uh, my high-speed st steel tool, I probably would have had to sharpen that thing two or three times to uh, get through this. Uh, my other tool, it's a, it was a cheaper tool, so it doesn't last. It doesn't hold an edge very well, and. Uh, I don't know. I got used to sharpening, so it is what it was, and uh, I can see I'm going to enjoy turning a whole lot more with this one. So right here, I'm just getting it, getting it round, getting it close to the size of the bushings, and getting the blank to have a slight taper toward the center. Um, I don't, I don't like to have my 
pins be completely flat across the entire thing. I, I like to have a little bit of a, a taper towards the center of the pin. So I'm just smoothing it out and now I'm taking very, very fine passes to make sure I've got it nice and smooth. Here's the noisy part. I uh, turned on the shop vac for this one. This gets really dusty when I'm starting to do some sanding. Now I'm going through the grits. I'm starting off with 150, 220, 320, 400, and 600. And I'm also doing, I actually do 600 twice. Uh, I have a 600 grit that has a foam backing that I like to use that that gives me a just a finer finish than the 600 grit on these rolls that I it just seems to give me a, a, a nice smoother final finish before I move on to the, uh, the CA finish on top of there so here you can see I'm doing that that with the foam backing there so just just a step that I like to take then I wipe it off with a uh, napkin there and I'm gonna move on to some CA finish now when I'm applying CA uh, on the finger that I'm actually uh, using, uh, I put a I, I cut off a finger of a rubber glove and I put that over that finger so I don't end up getting CA on there. Uh, I don't tend to allow the CA to soak all the way through the little piece of paper towel that I put a dab on anyway, so it, I, I never really get much CA on me. But just in case, it, I end up putting a uh, a uh, little piece of rubber glove on me. So uh, when I'm when I'm applying the CA, I'll just put a small little dab on there and wipe it on. Throw that piece of paper towel away. Put another dab on there. Wipe it on. Throw that piece of paper towel away, and just keep on applying. I usually apply probably about 10, 12 coats, and then I'll get started on using some micro mesh. And I'll start off with micro mesh around 1,200 grit, and uh, go all the way through to 12,000 grit. And what you see me using right here is actually a white diamond polish and uh, using this actually ends up uh, basically making this look like glass once I'm done with it. And I've got a, a little pen press here. This makes it a whole lot easier. I used to always use uh, just a regular clamp, uh, which works just fine. Uh, just sometimes it gets a little finicky and, and the pen can slip. And if you, depending on the clamp that you're using, uh, I was often using just some parallel clamps and you can actually apply too much pressure very easily. And I've actually bent some pens doing that. So uh, you have to be a little careful. And with this pen press, it makes it a lot easier. Definitely uh, better that way. Uh, pretty good little investment. Once again, I want to thank you guys for watching. This was a fun little build. I've made quite a few pins, and uh, I've made about a dozen or so out of antler. And antler is actually really fun to work with. It is a hard material, uh, which is, I have to sharpen my old tools quite a few times to actually work with antler. But uh, that uh, new tool that I got there, the Easy Wood Tools uh, Carbide Cutter, that made a big difference there. So that was, that was pretty awesome. But the fun part about antler is it's different every time you work with it because the coloration inside the antler is is you get a different result every time so that's really awesome but like i said i want to thank you guys for watching it was really fun and uh, if you haven't seen some of my previous videos definitely check those out if you're new to my channel uh, I, I do quite a few build videos and i've got a whole lot more to come so like and subscribe and follow along and i just want to thank you guys for watching and i hope you all have a great day and god bless